This book ruined my life. Jim and Bilbo were two really close friends. They were thick as sleep, always dreaming big and sharing their hopes. But as they grew up, their career path took different turns. Jim chose the safe route to success. He got a fancy degree, landed a top job, and climbed the corporate ladder like a pro. Deep down, he felt something was missing. Bilbo, on the other hand, took the Senate route. He explored different careers, started his own business, and even traveled to help others. Though his journey wasn't always easy, he felt fulfilled. These stories, one traditional and one a little bit more unconventional, are what Paul Miller explores in The Pathless Path. Imagining a new story for work and life. And these stories resonate with me quite a lot. And this book, after reading it, actually ruined my life. Let me tell you my story. At the age of 12, I have my first memory of going abroad. From, I'm from Uruguay, and I have my first memory of going to another country. I went to the US, Miami, Disney, fell in love, and I was like, Uruguay is not my place. I want to leave. I did everything I could, and with the help of my parents, of course, to find a better future for myself. The way I knew that could happen was by studying the way that I was taught, at least. Study hard and you can achieve whatever you want. Age 20 was when I made the move. I moved abroad and I moved here to the Netherlands where I'm currently living at age 27. I started economics and on my first year of studying, I already knew that I was not really enjoying what I was doing. Though I continue because I knew that I could get a future and a good paying job and uh, build a career from it. At age 25, I graduated both from my bachelor in economics and my master in finance. I got my first good job and I started working. And within a few weeks, I realized that I was not happy and that I will have to be doing this for the rest of my life. And I was really not gonna be doing this for the rest of my life. That's when sitting one day in the toilet at work, because that's something I used to do a lot, sit for half an hour a day, perhaps, in the toilet, just contemplating how miserable I was. I discovered this book, The Pathless Path. I came across a post on LinkedIn that mentioned how a guy quit his consultancy job, something I was doing, to eventually go work and travel the world and be a freelancer and live beyond his means and be happy with his decision. I bought it, I bought this book and read it in one week, one whole week, 200 pages. I couldn't put it down, couldn't put down this book and I read it. Just for you to understand, I was someone that read a book, perhaps two books a year. Okay, now I'm finding my way and I'm reading a book a month. A little bit more sometimes. That's the goal at least, one book a month. And with this book I read it in one week. That's how good I felt the book was and how much it resonated with me. Why? Because the guy was working in consultancy and I was working in consultancy. The guy was feeling miserable and I was feeling miserable. I wanted to know what he was doing, what he did different to change his course of life and to become happy. The premise of this book is basically that there's two paths in life. There's the default path, the path that we're raised with. You study hard, get a job, then get a wife or a partner or whatever you want, get married, have kids, climb the corporate ladder, and after 40, 50 years of working, retire, your kids inherit everything and you pass away. That's basically the default path, a path of conformity. On the hand side, there's the pathless path, a path where you don't know what there is, where you go walking around instead of in a straight line, in circles, just discovering however you feel fulfilled. That's the pathless path, without a path, literally. Now, what makes us fall into this default path? And that's just the certainty trap, let's say. The certainty trap is that Perhaps we're not happy with our jobs, 
perhaps we're not doing what we want. We do have our expenses. We do have things that we need to be doing. Um, I'm paying for, I'm getting a job in exchange for our time, for example. We know that at the end of the month, we're going to get money in our bank account. And with this money, we can deposit it and pay for holidays. If you fall for the certainty trap, you will be exchanging your hours for certainty. Certainty that at the end of the year, at the end of the month, no matter what, you're going to get salary and you're going to be able to pay your bills and do whatever you want to do with the rest of your free time. However, here we are just living a miserable, at least what Paul says, we're living a miserable life in exchange of some certainty that perhaps it's not fulfilling us. On the hand side again, you can just quit the certainty trap <laughs> and live a life of fulfillment. Perhaps there's no certainty that you will make your ends meet, but you can live a life where you're constantly happy doing what you want to do with your life rather than working and living a life of certainty where you know what's going to happen. Now, this book changed my life. I changed my life in the way I think, in the way I approach life, and up to a certain extent, it ruined my life. It ruined my life because I was really unhappy, as I mentioned on my story. I was really unhappy with the place I was working in, and it just made me feel miserable with the things that I was doing. I would be working 40 hours a week. I would be getting home exhausted, not having or not wanting to do anything else, not even going to the gym, not spending time with my friends, nothing. And that affected me. It affected my mood. It affected everything. After I read this book, I felt that there was a path. There was a way of getting out of that conformity trap, a way of growing in a personal and spiritual way and feeling fulfilled and doing things that perhaps brought me more joy and I could pay my bills. That's how this book changed my life, changed the way I think. And it was actually the main reason of why I created a YouTube channel, because I knew that perhaps my story will resonate with other people and perhaps I could be teaching or helping others. That was my whole purpose and that's my whole purpose, teaching and helping others. Now with my YouTube channel created two years ago, spoiler alert, I haven't made the penny from it. My idea was that within six months I would be posting videos and I would get 100,000 subscribers and I would quit my job and I would never have to work again and I could travel the world, live in a van and do all of those things. Nothing of that happened. Two years into the journey and I'm still not getting anything out of it, more than joy. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing it. Um, and yeah, last year I actually was in a pretty dark place and perhaps you can feel from the titles and content that I was making it was pretty like down uh, emotionally and I was not feeling myself because I knew that I could do more, I could be happy, I could be living a life of fulfillment, but I was not. I was trapped to this default path that I was really, really not happy with. It took me one year and a half, almost two years to actually change that, to actually change the way I was viewing life. Viewing life. I was viewing life in a way that I was just sitting, going to work and was like, ah, oh, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm really not enjoying this, sitting into meetings and what's the purpose of the meeting? Really content, constantly questioning what I was doing, why I was doing it and who I was doing it for. It was certainly not me. I was not doing this for myself. Okay, yeah, I was paying my bills, but at what cost? My emotional health and my mental health. I pulled the trigger, changed my jobs, and I'm now way happier than I was. And now changed my mindset, took me therapy also to change my mindset and to change the way I think and to realize that not everything can happen fast. 
the same way that from the age of 12 to 20, I knew that I wanted to leave my country and I didn't stress back then of, oh, am I going to make it or not? I was 100% sure that I was going to make it one day. My idea was to graduate in Uruguay and then move. In the end, I ended up graduating here. So I fast forward and started living my dream life before I wanted it. So that was nice. I guess that these few years after were just uh, taking, <laughs> yeah, how do I say that? These few years after were the few years that I haven't been, let's say myself, were just adding to me moving away and achieving my dreams before I actually intended of building it. Anyway, this book changed my life and the way I think, and I think that, I believe that anyone can just achieve their dreams if you really set your mind to. My dream right now is to live a happy and fulfilled life. And it really took me a lot of therapy, a lot of emotional health and strength and support from family and friends to get out there, to get out of there and to eventually start realizing that there's more to life than just doing what makes you happy and a job is just a job. Luckily now I'm in really enjoying my job. Um, I'm really happy with what I'm doing. Perhaps it was just my previous employer that I was not happy with. Um, but I think that eventually there will come a day that I will be leaving the company. I will be hopefully becoming a successful YouTuber or making content for companies or opening my own company, let's say. And eventually I will escape this default path I'm still stuck in and move into the pathless path without certainty and curiosity. And the way to do that is going to be instead of thinking, what my life is right now and where I want to take my life, think of what could my life be in the future? What could my, I could do of my life and how can I get there? So enjoying the present, staying present and thinking of the future and not of the past and where I was. Try to enjoy the little things and just try to be happy with what I'm doing. Because besides, because, well, right now I perhaps not be where I want to be in 10 years. I know that I can get there and while well, right now I'm living a certain life that perhaps I'm not 100% happy with, I know that I'm living the dream life that 12 year old me actually wanted to be living now. Anyway, if you want to change your life, really read this book. It's probably one of the best books I've ever read. It ruined my life for good, not for bad. And I think that everyone should strive for more in their own paths and not just fall for a life of conformity, but actually challenge themselves and their, yeah, their status quo, let's say, that they currently live in for a life of fulfillment, happiness, and hopefully money. Yeah.